Good morning, Keith Tebow from FRC Media. Happy New Year. It's the first Thursday of uh, 2021. And as we have been doing for quite a while on Thursday mornings, we're going to be joined right now by the mayor of the city of Fall River, Mayor Paul Coogan. Mayor, Happy New Year. How are you? Doing well, Keith. How about yourself? I am uh, hanging in there. We're all still hanging in there as uh, 2020 uh, morphs into 2021. Um, you know, I, I want to start a little bit with some COVID updates. Um, you know, the numbers have been what they are. They've been relatively consistent uh, in a bad way in some in some instances in terms of uh, the, the numbers. And unfortunately, the number of fatalities has been on the rise. Uh, again, just an update from you. Any any trends and tendencies we're hearing that may be different from the last time we spoke a few weeks ago? Uh, not really, Keith. It's pretty it's pretty widespread across the city, um, you know. We monitor it every day. Uh, I woke up yesterday morning. I stopped by the Board of Health, and we were, had, like I think, 70 cases on the board. I think Somerset had something like 50. Um, I think this whole South Coast region, I don't know if we're uh, piggybacking on Rhode Island or whatever, but um, we have been on a, a very negative streak with our numbers for a while. Um, I, I think it's mostly household spread from what I hear when I talk to the nurses. It's people doing the wrong things in their home or with their friends. Um, we had some cases that came back uh, in the schools on Monday after vacation, but there hadn't been any kids or they hadn't been in the building for two weeks. So we know that that wasn't school related at that time. So uh, we keep slugging and trying to figure out how we're going to get to the end of this. And uh, hopefully we're going to be turning the corner. I keep hearing some good news around the middle of end of January, which is uh, people that are doing the projections hope something's going to change around then. So let's see what happens. Yeah. Has there been any, um, any modeling at all is, you know, the trend is that there's anticipation that it could get a little bit of wor worse because of the holiday and people getting back. And after new year's, you've got two weeks after that. Is that what you're hearing as well locally that, right. you know, there could be still a little more of a spike coming up in the next right. few weeks? I think that that's, that's what they want to look at is what happened after the two holidays, back to back Christmas and new year's. And, I think we're already in the Christmas uh, kick up now. Um, I guess next seven to 10 days will be the New Year's kick up and then we'll see where we stand. Um, and we saw a lot of people traveling. We saw a lot of people in small clusters in homes. Um, and, and, you know, you try to tell people to do the right thing, but people uh, at this point in this battle are pretty fatigued and they've pretty much had enough of uh, politicians telling them how to live. So let's, uh, let's say a prayer and ride this out together. Yeah. Let me ask you a little bit about vaccines. Um, what role will, will the city's health department and maybe your office play in terms of, you know, informing people about the vaccine? And is there any organization at all that the city will play in terms of getting people out to get vaccinated, you know, when it becomes a little more widespread later on this spring? Right. Absolutely. Um, we're working in conjunction with EMS. We're going to start our first batch of uh, first responder vaccines. I think it's at Bristol Community College on Monday. Um, we have had a few um, vaccines given out in some of our nursing homes. Um, we're going to, we have an orderly systematic system, a systematic system, like system ready to go at BCC. Um, they have freezers there. They have the uh, facilities and we're going to start bringing people in on Monday. And uh, all we need is some more vaccines to get going to uh, open it up to all the citizens. But right now we're only in phase one, which is obviously the first responders and the high risk. And I'm sure, um, you know, people are both um, anticipating uh, the, the possibility and the opportunity to get vaccinated while also being a little bit of anxious as well. And, you know, we get mixed signals a lot from the federal government. Um, in less than two weeks, we'll have a new president uh, inaugurated and the state's doing its best. Um, what are you hearing in terms of that coordination? Because um, obviously, I guess it funnels down, right? right. Federal government to state to, to local in terms of the organization of how this rollout will eventually take place in cities like Fall River. Right. Well, the, the DPH um, works very, very closely with the state um, DPH. And they're the ones that are coordinating it on the city level. Um, also working closely with EMS, which has obviously had their um, testing center going at um, the main fire station for a long time. Those areas are going to be where we coordinate. Um, I'm hoping that we get some additional staff to give out the vaccines when we get more vaccines. Right now, we have a very, very limited supply. So um, this is going to 
drip out a little slowly here until we get thousands and thousands of vaccines in Fall River, and then we'll have to ramp it up as we go. Yeah. Um, and um, any idea? Um, I know that, you know, people want to be respectful to, you know, the phases in terms of when they get their vaccine. Any idea when you would expect to get yours? I'm going to wait. <laughs> I'm going to wait till my turn in line. I've said that a number of times. Believe it or not, someone actually called me and said, listen, we have a uh, one extra vaccine. Would you want to get it? I said, I cannot cut the line. I'll get a I'll get killed, Keith. You'd be doing a whole different line of questioning with me if I told you that, but I'm going to wait my turn. And when it's my turn, I'll tell you, you can come down and uh, film me getting it. You'll see me crying from the needle, but, uh, but I'm going to do it in order with all the other residents of Fall River. All right. Uh, I want to shift gears now. Um, uh, your office announced yesterday that um, you're going to be providing some relief to some uh, local restaurants and, and, and businesses that um, have liquor licenses, licenses rather in the city of Fall River by providing a 25% uh, refund, if you will, on their 2021 uh, license fees. Mayor, how did this all come about and how do you hope it'll help the, the, those businesses here in Fall River? Well, obviously, it's not it's not unique. Uh, some other towns have done it. We, uh, we had conversations with members of the city council. They put a resolution in a couple of weeks back, but we were still looking at how it was going to shake out financially. And uh, obviously, those places were closed for three months. So if that's 25% a year, you couldn't do any business. So let's try to be fair with these people. Um, you know, one-time rebate, uh, we, can, we can afford it and we'll get a... We'll get our businesses back up on and running when this is done. But right now, I just thought it was the uh, common sense thing to do. And the reason we went with those fees is because they are so much higher than the traditional fees. We have a number of $50 and $100 fees. But um, like our fee for bars and licenses, almost $3,500. So those people put a significant investment into the city. And we were just trying to make them partially whole for those months they were down. Yeah. As we um, as we look ahead um, into uh, 2021, um, you know there is a lot of optimism, and we talked about the COVID situation. But how do you foresee, um, you know, taking your role as mayor? Uh, I guess what have you learned? COVID aside, I guess uh, that first year in office, and as you start year two of your your first term. Well, you have to you have to be able to pivot very quickly in this job. Um, when I was out campaigning, we were running around the city. We were never talking about something like this, and uh, and then this came rolling in right at right at the beginning of the term. I was yesterday was uh, one year ago. I was sworn in as the mayor of Fall River, which was a real real privilege. But boy, oh boy, I did not know what was coming down the road. And uh, and we're still a year later, still talking about COVID. Uh, in January, it was just something on the horizon. It was in the state of Washington, and now it's right in our lap. Um, when you look at the CDC state data tracker, Massachusetts is probably around nineteenth to twentieth out of the 50 states as a state, but there are some states that are doing far, far worse than us. And uh, the only states that are doing significantly better are the small ones like Vermont and Maine. But it did come right into the sixth floor and we've uh, we've had to uh, be very, very nimble on our feet to get this, to keep this city running and to make sure people are still getting services. And, uh, and we're trying to be as close to normal as we can, which is what I think people want to see. They want to, they want to see government in action. They don't want to see us. I don't think they want to see us all shut down and doing everything remote. I think they want to see us in our offices working to help the residents. Yeah, and if I can just go back, I wanted to ask you a question about schools. Um, schools are going to be primarily remote um, for uh, the next uh, week or so um, after the Martin Luther King holiday. Right now, the plan is is to get uh, the elementary schools back sort of on that uh, that hybrid model that the the, the city started the, the year off and then uh, toward the beginning of February, the high school. Um, I know the school committee, I believe, is meeting next week. As far as you know, do you think that's still going to be the plan as we head uh, forward through the next two weeks? Yeah, I think the uh, I think the rationale for that was to see what shook out over the holidays um, for our cases and to see where we stood. Um, I think I haven't heard any changes. We're going to have a meeting on the 11th and we're going to talk about the reopening plan. So I'm hoping we can get the kids back in school. I really, I really feel bad um, for all these kids um, from ages six to 18 that are not getting the kind of education they deserve and they're being bounced in and out of these buildings. Parents are juggling like mad to find childcare. Um, 
I don't know how they're doing with their college essays and their college admissions for our seniors in our schools. It's uh, it's just overwhelming. I did see there were some modifications on MCAS tests, but I got to believe they got to go a little further than that because I just don't see how they can hold these kids accountable for what they've missed. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Mayor Paul Coogan, again, Happy New Year. Let's hope uh, it's, a, it's a great 2021. Thank you for joining me as always, and we'll talk again next week. Take care. Thank you, Keith. All right. Have a good day. I'm Keith Tebow, FRC Media. We'll talk again next time.